Well, hello, everyone. This is Keith Jowers with Dads for Life and the Dad Connection radio shows and video podcasting. We are here today to talk to a special friend of mine that, once again, I just happened to come across and met one day. And, uh, well, we kind of had a mutual friend, uh, Maggie Cavanaugh, who has an awesome show of her own and uh, talking about keys to successful living. And, and uh, one day she called me. She said, well, you know, you just need to make sure you listen to today's show about, well, who I've got on there. And I said, well, who's that? And it's Robert Shepard, who is an actor for, well, well over three, three decades now. And uh, so we started talking. Uh, once I listened to that show, I just kind of got connected with Robert and uh, just found out to just be one genuine guy. You know, have you ever met those people that you know are just genuine in everything they're doing? Well, when you are around Robert for a few minutes, you kind of get that feeling. So I'm going to bring my friend in, Robert Shepard. Welcome to the Dad Connection, sure. Hey, Keith. Uh, uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Well, it's so good to see you again. I, uh, you know, I just it's only been a couple of months, I think, since I first heard that show with you and Maggie. And and I was just so blessed to, to get to know you a little bit just through that show. But then we kind of hit it off and started chatting offline and uh, just kind of, well, it was kind of interesting how how things brought all, this to get, brought all this together for us to be here today on our show, The Dad Connection. So welcome to the show. It's so good to actually finally connect with you and bring you to our audience on this side of the world. Well, it's my pleasure for sure, Keith. Well, Robert, I know that you are kind of doing some things for many years that I have just, well, I guess I've been doing for many years, but didn't really know that I really wanted to do it, well, full time or more than I was doing it anyway, and that's in the field of acting. And uh, I know that you're doing a lot of faith-based stuff, and and I'm just kind of connected with you because I know you have one movie coming out that we're going to talk about in just a little bit, Past Shadows. And uh, so I just wanted to kind of get a little bit of a rundown of who Robert Shepard was for our audience. So tell us a little bit about Robert. Well, um, Keith, uh, I bill myself as a uh, a farm boy from the Missouri Ozarks and finally, after a long effort, found his way into the movies. <laughs> so it was never, so don't give up from what you're telling me uh, because it. Uh, I had lots of, I call fits and starts over the years, and uh, but I never lost that desire. And in fact, I actually have felt it was my calling uh, to be an actor. Uh, and um, actually, that was a little contrary to the little country church, our Pentecostal church I was raised up in, because when I was young, they sort of thought movies were of the devil, you know. So uh, it took me a little while to come to grips with, well, I, could, I don't know about that, but I do feel like that, uh, that uh, my calling in life is to be an actor. So even though I had to take breaks from it and other things, I never lost that uh, hope. Uh, the fact that uh, someday that it would uh, it would come about, and due to the good Lord's grace, uh, it, it sort of has. And how many years have you been doing it now, Robert? Uh, about thirty, but that means like almost thirty full time. But there were other efforts that I made over the years um, and to uh, you know try to figure out how to get my foot in, and maybe not just acting, but in show business in general. Uh, in my earlier days, I did a lot of uh, singing, gospel singing, and I even cut a little 45 gospel record. Uh, I ended up making a demo uh, back um, well over 40 years ago uh, out in L.A. Uh, and while I was there that summer, I called up and was invited to uh, audition for uh, a show called The Dating Game. And uh, I actually was... Uh, uh, then I got a call back, and then lo and behold, they booked me for the show. So I actually made my national tape, uh, TV debut back in 1970 as Bachelor Number Two on the Dating Game. So then there's these long gaps in between before other things happen. Um, got into the military, uh, which I actually liked much better than I thought. I had a real positive attitude, but this acting thing was so strong that I resigned my commission over 40 some years ago and my wife and I moved to LA to pursue acting. And we were there almost nine months. 
Um, and uh, I was actually making some headway. I was in a radio and TV uh, communication school using the GI Bill, but I was picking up extra work. I did a workshop for these casting directors and uh, they really liked me and got me signed up with one of the top uh, commercial uh, agents uh, that just handled people for commercials in LA. And then 10 days after our daughter was born, uh, my wife had an aneurysm. And uh, that is a story all of its own because the bottom line is she was miraculously restored. One of the true miracles I've ever witnessed in my life. But by that time, uh, I just felt without ha having steady income and a baby and all of that, we actually moved back to Missouri and I taught another round of teaching school, ultimately got back on active duty and stayed till 20. And then when I got here in Virginia, while I was on active duty, I really, uh, I got an agent and I started booking jobs. Uh, and be, and um, so uh, I tell people, and then when I retired, I tell people now I can actually afford to be a freelance actor because I've got that army retirement, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm also a veteran. I retired from the uh, Air Force, or actually Air National Guard, part-time. So I, I decided to go the part-time route so I could take care of my mom. Being My, my dad died so young. He, he died when I was 11 years old. So, But when my, my older brother was in full-time Air Force, and I actually went into the part-time. And, and, but hey, the, we're also retired. So thank you for your service. And, well, and, they, and thank you for yours. And I was uh, two years in the Missouri National Guard in between my, uh, my time on, uh, on active duty. So I just have great uh, admiration for, uh, you know, the, the, the great folks that are, that are part of our Guard and Reserve units around the country. Well, I think I, I respect uh, our military, regardless of what branch or whether it's part-time or guard or full-time. Uh, I think our, our military and our police and our first responders sometimes don't get the credit they need, that's for sure. So, but, you know, I, I was so excited to actually meet you when I heard about you on Maggie's show because you just have a lot of experience. And um, I, I was telling you earlier uh, that um, I actually have a lot of experience on stage and, and worked with kids and at church and also at the school I was a, a police officer at for many years. And playing all the different roles that I've had, I've been blessed to, to have any role that I've had. But now to do it and actually seeing things fall into place to do it for this time in my life, well, it's kind of exciting. And you and I have talked about some of the experiences you've had. What are some of the positive experiences that you've had in the field of acting, Robert? Well, you know, it's um, it, it can be. Uh, first of all, it, it is a tough business, so I don't want to, you know, to gloss over that because you know rejection is just around the corner. Even though you may have just booked uh, a starring role in something, and you may audition, and for whatever reason, uh, maybe you don't look like the character. Maybe they're looking for a different component. Whatever. So rejection is always there, but overall, I have had a very positive experience uh, uh, in, in acting. And, um, you know, of course, probably um, the high point so far was when I was cast in Steven Spielberg's Lincoln, playing the attending physician um, to, uh, of course, Daniel Day-Lewis, who was so excellent in that role. And uh, I have the next to the last scene, and I get to announce the uh, the date and time of the great man's passing. And uh, so that certainly was a rather heady experience to be after years of kind of batting around, working in all kinds of productions, none of which I ever put down because I learned from all of them, student films, training films, um, low budget movies, all of those things I did. But to finally be there and have, uh, uh, you know, Mr. Spielberg directing me and one of the greatest actors in the world on the bed there that I would have to go and listen to his uh, last breath, uh, it, it was kind of a, almost an out of body experience, but, uh, uh, I have, uh, that would probably be, uh, the highlight so far, even though I've learned from all of these opportunities that I've had, uh, Keith. Well, you know, I believe that in life, we go through many things in, in all the different seasons of our life, but you should look for all the opportunities out there. I, I think that, uh, life has, it's full of opportunities, isn't it, Robert? 
And, and, you know, I think anyone that's looking to become an actor, and I know that sort of the typical thing, and if you feel led uh, to go to L.A., <clears throat> excuse me, to go to New York, wherever, which are the sort of the typical routes, then if you feel like it's what the Lord is leading you to do, do it. But the other thing is don't discount what's right in your own backyard. Uh, because uh, many times there are uh, theater groups, there are, and I like uh, as well, Keith had that great experience uh, doing passion plays at a large church I was part of. Uh, they are incredible. Uh, they're as close as anything I've come to Broadway with a full orchestra, um, maybe a, a hundred member choir, a hundred cast, uh, the costumes, the uh, you know, and packed audiences and the church I was in, buses would come from far and wide to bring people in. Uh, so my, what a great opportunity that that was, both as an actor, and then I ended up directing and was drama coach and, uh, uh, and, and all kinds of things. So it was a great experience, and that was right in my, my own backyard. So, um, you know, don't discount what is right there uh, before you uh, as well to help get you started. Well, that's for sure. And that kind of leads me into my next question. You know, we talk about on uh, the Dad's uh, Connection shows, we, we talk about being a positive dad, being involved with your children's lives. I know you, you have three children and you have a few grandchildren. So tell us how, how involved were you uh, as they were growing up? Did you let them kind of find their own way in life or did you kind of want them to go in the same direction as you? Because being a father, you have to be there to listen uh, more than you speak sometimes, but find out what path God has them on, don't you? Well, that was truly uh, what my wife and I felt. Uh, one thing, we had felt very free, both of us, to follow our dreams, if you will, and, and do what we feel like we were led to do. So <clears throat> what we wanted to do with the Lord's grace is try to provide a good example. We tried our best to be Christian parents, but then I tried to really pay attention to uh, what our children wanted to do, what they wanted to be. Uh, and it became obvious fairly early with at least two of them. Our daughter ended up, <clears throat> instead of just playing with dolls, she played being a teacher to her dolls. And guess what? She went into education and, uh, and was with that for many years. My oldest son, uh, very early on, uh, felt he had a special calling. Uh, to his uh, uh, life, and, and even in high school, uh, started working as an intern and working his way up through, uh, and now he's pastor of a church. So, uh, you know, but, but that was his calling. He was not, it wasn't called to be a pastor by mom and dad. It was called to be a pastor by God. And uh, then our youngest um, took a little different path, he always liked physical activity. He's kind of an Iron Man, if you will. And so uh, college wasn't particularly his thing. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, and, and hard work was something that he never hesitated with. And he has uh, got a job with the Hampton Road Sanitation Department. And uh, he worked his way up until well, now he's one of the top supervisors of a very large organization. Uh, and I kind of kiddingly say, and he actually makes more money than his brother and sister that uh, went the college route. <laughs> so the point is, they're all three different. Uh, and, and I hope we provided the environment uh, for them to become who they wanted to be. And we couldn't be more proud. Well, and that's so exciting because, you know, in our ministry or Dads for Life now, we've been around for 17 years. We work to encourage, enhance, and enrich dads and what we consider their greatest asset on earth, and that's their children. You know, the stock market will let you down, but if you if you invest in your children enough, you know, then then as you get older and everything, I mean, you're still going to have that relationship with them as as I do with my children, as or as as you do with yours. So, and as we talked about earlier, the grandchildren are the benefits of that. <laughs> you bet. And you know, Keith, I, I I would just like to emphasize what you have said. Uh, because it doesn't matter how successful you might be, whether it's acting, whether it's military, whether it's education, 
you know, it is so important that you value that family and church and other things to keep grounded because you could be the most successful person in the world. And if you do not have that family connection, if you do not, uh, you know, have, have a spiritual grounding, it can be a very hollow success. And unfortunately, we see so many stories of that, of very successful people making millions of dollars. They're famous, but they are miserable and, and, and have one broken relationship after the other. So um, I would just suggest anyone interested in kind of following in, in any career, just remember, you know, it needs to be undergirded by faith and family. Absolutely. That foundation is so important, Robert. So let's talk about past shadows. That's, uh, that's why we really kind of brought this whole um, program together today. We were talking about the current film you're in with a, a particular actor that I enjoy uh, watching perform. And well, now I want to kind of kind of lead into talking about that. And we're going to show the trailer of this movie in just a, uh, a little bit into our show. But I want you to tell us about past shadows and how you got involved in the backstory on Past Shadows. That's your newest film. Yes, well, for one thing, uh, of the small independent films, which Past Shadows is, uh, it probably took us about four years from the time we started, uh, you know, trying to get it produced to actually getting it produced. And where now it is uh, being distributed and it's going to be available coming up in the next uh, uh, week, couple weeks. Uh, for, uh, you know, for people to watch. So uh, we spent a couple of years just trying our best to find uh, a, the right director. And we thought we might have one. And then for whatever reason, uh, it, it didn't work. Uh, we also made an effort to try to get investors. And I will tell you, there's nothing harder in the world that I've found than trying to get people to give their money for you to make movies with. It's not easy. And so we went through all of that. And then finally, uh, we uh, had, I came in contact with a man that actually used to live here in Virginia uh, named Peter J. Eaton that was now out in L.A. And uh, he'd been in the, in the film business for years. I'd actually, years ago, had worked with him as an extra in a, a little low-budget feature he made and then in an industrial film. But we were friends on Facebook, and I showed him the script. He loved it, and he actually then uh, moved back here um, in, to Virginia so that he could take over and become uh, director. So once we had him, then other things began to fall in place. And uh, we actually then started filming probably about two and a half years after we had thought about it in the summer of uh, 2018. And then uh, we ended up after looking at it, decided it needs some additional scenes. So we came back the next summer, 2019, and had two days of filming additional scenes. And then we seriously went into, you know, finding the editors, the sound editors, the person that could write the music bed, all of those. And uh, the good news for us, COVID hit, but by that time, all of our movie had been filmed. And so the people we needed to, help finish us, we could communicate on the computer, on the phone, whatever. So it really didn't hold it up uh, uh, that much as it did other productions that I was part of that basically just didn't happen because of COVID. So then we got it out, ready to go in, uh, in December of, uh, of last year. And uh, we had a great premiere in an old historic theater called the Commodore in Portsmouth, Virginia. And, uh, and then we were very fortunate uh, to get Bridgestone Multimedia uh, to be our distributor. And as we say now, um, I know it's going to be available on, uh, on Amazon Prime. It's uh, uh, available on something called christianbooks.com, uh, which uh, there it'll be uh, the 10th of September before they will ship it. But on both of those sites, you can pre-order. And then, uh, as far as we know, Christian cinema is coming along. And later in the fall, there's going to be uh, Encourage TV, uh, Tubi, uh, CMAX uh, TV channel, other places. Uh, so throughout the rest of the year, once it gets launched, uh, it should be available. 
Well, I think that's a great uh, introduction to let's see in the trailer of Past Shadows. And why exactly are we following him? It's just a hunch, but I think this Monty kid has seen Noah Steele. But he died over 150 years ago. It's strange how it's glowing. Are you ready now to tell me exactly what happened the day your grandson was kidnapped? Did you or did you not slip him that drug? Miracles and coincidence. He's dying, Charles. You ready, Charles? So, theoretically, Something that may have happened 50 or even 100 years ago could be happening all around us right now. Nice find, Uncle Lewis. Okay, well, that's the trailer of Past Shadows and featuring my friend here, Robert Shepard. And tell us about Corbin Benson, how he came about board for this movie. Well, I had uh, also back in 2018, back in the spring, uh, he was here in Virginia uh, filming a movie in, uh, in a little town called Smithfield called Mary and the Number Four, Mary for Mayor. And I had tried to get on that film, uh, but I wasn't getting anywhere. And all of a sudden, uh, I heard from a friend that they were looking for uh, about... Uh, uh, three actors that would be a member of a senior retirement community. So at the last minute, just before they filmed, uh, went over to Regent University, which was also involved in this project. And uh, I and, uh, and a, another uh, couple that I'd known for years auditioned, and lo and behold, we were booked as principals on his film, Mary for Mayor. Probably worked four or five days. And of course, you know, we worked together, but he is very busy. He's producer, director, uh, he's a lead actor. And uh, so it's not exactly like we hung out drinking coffee because he was working, but he knew who I was. So then we had a pre-production meeting for Past Shadows and our team said, hey, we really need to have kind of a name to help us to um, get this film distributed. And so I said, well, why don't I try to contact uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Bernson and see if he would do it. So I, uh, through another friend, actually, I got his email and I started out, I said, uh, hey, sir, this is uh, Franklin from Mary for Mayor, which was my character. And I said, we've got this little film and we would so love for you to uh, come in for a day. And here's kind of what we can pay. And, uh, <clears throat> and here's our time frame." And uh, lo and behold, he came back and he said, well, if you can film it in this time, and he gave us specific dates within our window of filming, he said, I'll do it. So, of course, we were delighted. And I'm on set filming the day he was supposed to fly in from New York. And I get a call and he said, hey, Bob, this is Corbin. Um, I hate to tell you this, but all flights are canceled due to summer storms. But he said, don't worry, I will be there if I have to rent a car. And so, wow, I was, first of all, blown away by his generosity, but I started working with his um, administrative assistant, and he was able to get uh, to uh, the train station in New York, took the train down to Ashland, uh, Virginia, uh, was met by our cops costume person who lived there, and he stayed the night that she brought him to set. Everything stayed on track. Uh, he was delightful. And uh, I really um, I have such a fond uh, recollection of getting to meet with him and, and what he did to help us, because he wouldn't have to. He did a lot more for us uh, than we did for him. Oh, well, I've just always enjoyed his movies. And he seemed like he'd be, a, you know, just a really nice guy. So it sounds like he's uh, living up to form there. So that's awesome. So well, tell right. us, uh, Keith, I had another connection with him in 2018. Oh, you did. Um, there was a movie also filmed in Virginia called First Lady. 
that had the lovely Nancy Stafford. Do you know Staff, uh, uh, Nancy? I do not. Uh, she was Matlock and so many different shows. She's a delightful, beautiful lady. Well, she has the lead in this movie called First Lady, and he plays the king of a, uh, a European country that uh, is um, infatuated with her and wants to see if there's a relationship after her husband, the president, dies. Well, lo and behold, I audition, and I'm cast in a flashback with a younger actor named Nico, who plays Corbin's character as the young prince. It's a flashback. So technically, I'm Corbin's father in the movie First Lady. <laughs> so we actually made three films that were in, although he was long gone, didn't get to work with him on First Lady. But um, uh, now all three of those films will be available if you want a, uh, a sort of a Bob and Corbin uh, film festival, you know. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what, you th I think you've had some great experiences in the, in the acting uh, career. And, and I just uh, am so honored just to meet you, Robert, and talk with you and catch up a little bit. You know, it's one thing to send an email or a chat or something, and, but actually to get a chance to actually converse like you and I've done in recent days has been really, uh, really special to me, and I really appreciate all your input. So once again, tell folks how they can watch the movie Past Shadows or how they can get in touch right, with Robert Shepard or, or follow what you're doing, sir. Sure. Uh, well, uh, first of all, um, it's starting uh, next week. Um, and I believe, I can't quite confirm that yet, although it's on the site, it'll be on Amazon Prime. Uh, I know that you can get it on christianbook.com uh, uh, on uh, September the 10th. And we believe it's going to be on uh, Christian Cinema as well. Uh, there will be additional sites. I think it can be ordered through a Christian bookstore if you have one. Uh, and then uh, later on, now that's, that's starting now, late summer, early fall. And then coming up in December, uh, it's going to be streamed wider on Encourage TV, Tubi. I think it's going to be a uh, uh, channel called uh, CMAX uh, TV. So uh, uh, it's kind of going to go in increments, but between now and the end of the year, it should be on multiple sites and there'll be places you can order hard copy uh, uh, as well. Uh, if you uh, should want to do that. If you're interested in, in keeping up with my career, which I would be uh, so blessed, um, I actually have a website, and it is called actorrobertshepherd.com. Okay, well, we're going to put a link to that also in this broadcast notes, and uh, so we can follow and keep up with what you're doing, so we can see you on the big screen, and we can say, hey, we saw that guy on the Dad Connection. We like him. So, uh, well, well, I appreciate that uh, so much. And uh, Keith, I so look forward to keeping in touch. And I just want to encourage you. I think you're uh, you're you're expanding your um, your horizon, if you will, into into other opportunities. And I appreciate what you do with your dad's sites. And uh, uh, and also, I just trust there's going to be more uh, roles for you in. Uh, in productions uh, coming up in the near future. Well, I appreciate that. I, uh, I'm working on one right now I told you about, so we're, there'll be more information about that down the road. But give us one final thing to dads. If you could say anything to dads out there, let's, maybe they have young children or maybe they have teenagers, and we know that's a whole different story, right? Uh, how to encourage or stay involved with our children. What would your advice be, Robert? I think probably one of the biggest challenges is just make sure that you find time to actually interact with them. Um, I, I know it's, I don't want to just stereotype because sometimes there are families that, you know, the mother may be the prime breadwinner or whatever, or there may be a single family member and it's tough, but typically it seems hard for men uh, to make that time uh, to make sure that they do get to know their kids. So, you know, take time, talk to them, spend time to them, with them, find out what they're interested uh, in doing and, uh, and end up, uh, you know, trying to support that as long as it's positive stuff. You know, we weren't too excited actually about uh, wrestling, but my kids loved it. So we took 
especially our oldest son that just loved it. We took him to some professional wrestling matches, you know, because that's kind of where he was at that particular point. So, um, you know, I think if you can set a good example and, and do your best to love them for who they are, uh, then um, you're just going to be so blessed uh, by the outcome. And I would also say don't be discouraged, even though it's easy to, because it's not uncommon for, especially in teenage years and young adults, that they want to sort of try their wings and fly. But remember, you know, the scripture says to train up a child in the way that he should go, and he'll not depart from it. And I believe that is true. Uh, so, uh, and commit them, uh, to the good Lord. And, uh, uh, I feel like we had so many other people in addition to my wife and I who were doing our best, but ministers and teachers and other people that, that uh, mentored and ministered to them, uh, to really ultimately help them become the great people that I feel like they are today. I think that's perfect advice. I really appreciate that. That's, that's, uh, that comes from the heart. I could tell because you did that. And, and I think some dads, they just want to give up sometimes too easily. And we can't do that because uh, I believe that if we enhance and encourage and enrich our, uh, our dads out there, like we've been known to do all of our 17 years, that's what we do. We encourage, enhance and enrich their life and what we consider their greatest asset on earth. And that's their children because our children will be there. Stock market may not be there tomorrow, but your children, if you invest in them, they're gonna be there for you when you need it the most. And um, so I really appreciate those words. My friends, we've been talking to Robert Shepard. He's an actor of, of well, many, many years uh, and uh, been in a lot of films and had a lot of experiences in life. And no matter what you do, you can just do, do your best and put your excellence into everything you do, whether it's acting, whether it's, uh, whatever your field is, like we were talking about earlier, um, before the show started, we we're talking about, you know, whether you're a lawyer or a doctor, whatever it is, if you invest in the, that field, you're going to learn more and more about it. So invest in your field, dads and moms, and you can invest in your children as well, because they will benefit from it the most. Sir, I appreciate your time with us today. Any final thoughts? Uh, yes, I, you know, another thing that I've tried to live by both as an actor or any, any kind of career or any dream that anyone out there is pursuing is don't forget to enjoy the process where you are today. Because if you wait to that day when you think you're going to be the star or you're going to be the CEO or whatever your goal is, you know, uh, and you're waiting for that, you could have a lot of wasted years. So enjoy the time, enjoy the process, uh, keep grounded and, uh, you know, uh, in, in God and, uh, and just enjoy your life. Take care of what's in front of you and the rest, I think, will take care of itself. Yes, I'll tell you, life doesn't uh, progress by looking in the rearview mirror, does it, Robert? That's right. <laughs> That's why we have this big windshield in front of us, folks. So till next time, this is Keith Jowers with Dads for Life at the Dad Connection with our friend Robert Shepard today coming to you from somewhere out there in the Midwest. So we're excited to be with him today and we thank him for his time. Thank you, Robert, and appreciate you being with us right here on the Dad Connection. Till next time, folks. Thank you. Try to encourage, enhance, and enrich the life of someone today or tomorrow. Make sure you start with your children because they truly do need it the most. May God bless you. Bye-bye.